Hello everyone. In this video, I will be explaining about acid-base disorders and Davenport diagram. So these concepts had around five to six questions in our evaluation exams, and I'm pretty sure the same weightage will be followed for our midterm examinations. So to get started, we must understand the concept first so that we are able to relate it to whatever kind of question or situation they give us. Let's start with arterial blood sample. You're going to take a blood sample and you're going to measure the pH of the blood sample. If the pH is less than 7.4, then that means it is acidosis. If the pH is greater than 7.4, then that means it is alkalosis. Now, each acidosis and alkalosis can have two causes. One is metabolic, the other is respiratory, metabolic and respiratory. Metabolic causes are purely due to your bicarbonate ions. HCO3 is your bicarbonate ion and your metabolic causes are purely due to your bicarbonate ion. Whereas your respiratory causes are purely due to your carbon dioxide. To be more specific, your partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Those will give your respiratory causes. Now, there is a normal value for this, which is 24 milli equivalent per liter. Whereas for carbon dioxide, you have 40 millimeters of mercury. When you go less than 24 milli equal per liter, that is going to cause acidosis. And you go more than that, that is going to cause alkalosis. So here in this picture, you can see acidosis is caused when less than 24 milli equivalent per liter of bicarbonate is present. And since bicarbonate is the metabolic cause, this will be called metabolic acidosis. Whereas for carbon dioxide, it is the opposite. Your TCO2 should go more than 40 mmHg to cause acidosis. And if you find out this is the reason, then that is due to respiratory acidosis. Now, same for alkalosis. When bicarbonate levels are greater than 24, then that is your metabolic alkalosis. But when your partial, car partial pressure of carbon dioxide is less than 40, that is your respiratory alkalosis. Again, once again, remember that metabolic causes is because of bicarbonate. Respiratory is because of your partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Now, an interesting concept here to understand is that all the metabolic problems will have respiratory compensation and all respiratory problems will have metabolic compensation. Why? Because this system is defective right now. So this can be evidently seen in this diagram here. For metabolic program, uh, problems, you have respiratory compensation. For respiratory problems, you have renal compensation, which is nothing but your metabolic compensation. And the same applies for here too. Now, this is a flowchart from the Guyton textbook. And this is what we can interpret from this flowchart. But how to attend questions that are given in exam? Let's take an example. You are given the value of pH, hydrogen ions, carbon dioxide, and bicarbonate ions. pH is the indicator of what is the problem. So let's say this is the first question, this is the second question. Let's do it one by one. pH of the first question is low. So less pH means it is acidic. So you can go ahead and confidently write that acidosis. Now, how to decide if it is respiratory or metabolic? Now, take a look at these two factors. There is increased CO2 and there is increased HCO3. Now, remember, increased CO2 is going to cause acidosis, whereas increased HCO3 is going to cause alkalosis, right? Look here. Increased HCO3 is causing alkalosis, right? Increased CO2 is causing acidosis. So that means here, what is supporting your pH? Your partial pressure of carbon dioxide is only supporting your pH. And remember, carbon dioxide is respiratory cause. So that means this is your respiratory acidosis. That is question one. Now let's crack question two. In question two, your pH is high. That means it is alkalotic, alkalosis. Now, what is causing this high pH? Is it your carbon dioxide or is it your bicarbonate? Let's, let's figure that out. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide, it is low. That means it is going to go away from acidity. That means it is approaching base. Whereas your bicarbonate is becoming less. That means this is approaching acidity. If there is less bicarbonate, that means it is acidic, right? But this is alkalotic because there is less carbon dioxide. So that means again, this factor is the one which is helping your pH to increase, which is making sure that the pH is increased and which is relating to it. So that means again for this, respiratory is your answer because carbon dioxide is the cause for it. I hope this is really clear. Just understand in the first step, let me write that down. 
in the first step look at the ph and determine if it is acidosis or if it is alkalosis in the second step look for pco2 and hco3 and find out which is causing your acidosis or alkalosis okay so that will give you whether it's respiratory or metabolic now if you would understood that clearly you can pause the video here and try to guess or try to answer what this condition is so tomorrow i'll be pinning the correct answer in the comment section so you can go ahead and put the correct answer in your comment section of this video okay questions were asked from this diagram too this diagram is called as your davenport diagram and this is for measuring your acid base disorders now let's understand this diagram first in the x axis you have your ph in the y axis you have your plasma bicarbonate level fine if that is clear we can move ahead this curved line here is called an isobar what is isobar means bar means pressure iso means equal so across this line you are going to have equal pressure so across this line you are going to have 40 mm of mercury now here's a question for you i am going to draw two lines a red line on top of this bar and a and a blue line below this bar now tell me which line which isobar will have more partial pressure than the one in the between one so how do we how do we understand that see this is 40 mm of mercury right and when you move to the left your ph is decreasing and when you move to the right your ph is increasing so for ph to decrease your carbon dioxide concentration should increase right for ph to decrease your pco2 should increase right so that means as you move from this to left ph is decreasing so that means carbon dioxide constant partial pressure should increase so that means this red line will have higher pco2 than this blue line blue line will have lesser pco2 so for example you can just take it as 50 and this as 30 the main reason is as you move towards the left your ph becomes low that means it's become more acidic that means your partial pressure of carbon dioxide should increase and that is why this line here is 50 and the line right hand to the middle line is your 30 now what is this line here this line is called your buffer line and this buffer line is for your bicarbonate because that is the major buffering substance present in our plasma or the blood now here you have respiratory acidosis in respiratory acidosis you have high amount of pco2 right you have high amount of pco2 and that is why it is towards this end of the graph now to compensate this remember i told you for respiratory problems you will have a metabolic compensation so what is the metabolic compensation for respiratory acidosis it is the increase of bicarbonate levels now if you follow this diagram this is the buffer line and if you see as you go towards more and more respiratory acidosis there is increased amount of compensation metabolic compensation fine as you go more towards respiratory acidosis the more compensation you get out of it so see bicarbonate levels are increasing y axis represents bicarbonate as you go up your bicarbonate levels increase so from here from the normal value if you go towards this side your concentration of bicarbonates is increasing which proves that for respiratory acidosis you have a metabolic compensation now what about respiratory alkalosis here your pco2 levels are less that means it's alkalotic now you need more acidic nature so that means your bicarbonate levels must decrease right so from the normal line see the bicarbonate levels drop down they drop a lot when you reach the extremes so in the y axis again you have the bicarbonate as you move towards the right your bicarbonate levels drop down and your ph increases because this is your respiratory alkalosis now this is your davenport diagram now how to identify if it is compensated partially compensated or uncompensated acidosis or alkalosis let's see that now you have to understand first these points these locus a b c d remember a it is present in the region of respiratory acidosis 
you can see from this diagram and d is present in the region of metabolic alkalosis you can see from this diagram now look at the arrows it is starting from normal and it is going away it is just going away it is not coming back to normal right so that means this is uncompensated so only one direction the arrows are going and they are not coming back so that means this is your uncompensated acid base disorders so this is uncompensated respiratory acidosis this is uncompensated metabolic alkalosis this is uncompensated metabolic acidosis and this is uncompensated respiratory alkalosis now what about this this it is going away and then it's coming back so does that mean this is compensated no it's not look here the ph value is in the center line 7.4 only when this dot meets the center line it is perfectly compensated but in this case it is meeting it halfway so that means this is partially compensated see this dot did not reach the center normal point so that means this is your partially compensated acid base disorder so once again let me revise this for you the arrow goes away and it comes back halfway the arrow goes away it comes back halfway that means it is partially compensated now finally what about perfectly compensated by now you should have figured it out the arrow goes away and it completely comes back to the center line which is your 7.4 ph again the arrow goes away and it completely comes back to your center line which is your 7.4 ph and that is your perfectly compensated okay now the major task here is you have to remember which quadrant stand for which acid disorder or which basic disorder this quadrant is respiratory acidosis why because this is your isobar remember this is your isobar and it is above the isobar that means pco2 is higher because ph is low as you go this side so that means this side is respiratory acidosis but this side it is respiratory alkalosis so make sure you remember what is in what side of the graph so that when you see the arrow marks you can easily put it depending on the movements of your uh, arrow if it is going totally away it is uncompensated if it is coming half way back it is partially compensated and if it is coming the, all the way back to the center line that is perfectly compensated okay that was about acid base disorders and your davenport diagram now what are the causes for these things first your respiratory acidosis let's look at what are the causes for respiratory acidosis for respiratory acidosis you have common causes like your obstruction of your trachea your lungs where less amount of carbon dioxide is escaping as a result pco2 will build up inside the lungs and cause respiratory acidosis another condition when you zoom in this is emphysema your surface area is decreasing as a result pco2 diffusion also decreases and pco2 build up increases that causes respiratory acidosis now what about respiratory alkalosis you see a guy going for mountaining mountaining he is climbing very high up in the altitude in this case he is going to ventilate a lot and he is going to expire a lot of carbon dioxide outside and as a result when lot of pco2 is out there is less pco2 inside the body that means it is alkalosis and because it is involving carbon dioxide it is respiratory alkalosis what about metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis is due to renal failure or you can say chronic renal failure or it happens when a person vomits out intestinal contents remember your intestine has basic fluid or alkali fluid alkaline fluid so that means if you're going to vomit this out your body is going to increase its acidity right so that is why it is causing acidosis whereas you take this case metabolic alkalosis it is due to the vomiting of gastric contents gastric contents are acidic in nature so when you're going to vomit acid content out that is going to cause your alkalosis because more acid is out less uh, more as more base is inside your body so that is going to cause your alkalosis metabolic alkalosis now other factors that cause metabolic acidosis are your diabetes mellitus other factors that cause metabolic alkalosis are increased production of aldosterone or increased production of diuretics or increased consumption of diuretics now here are some factors or facts that are from the 31st chapter of your guyton and hall just to emphasize because they look very important proteins 
proteins in our body are basically considered as bases because they are made up of amino acids which hold negative charge now h plus is going to go bind to these negative charges anything that accepts h plus is called your base right so what is a protein doing here it is accepting h plus a classic example for that is your hemoglobin present inside your rbcs so proteins in our body acts as bases by accepting the h plus ions and a classic example for that is your hemoglobin now there are some line of defense first line second line and third line when there are acid base disorders involved in our body first your first line of defense is your chemical acid base buffer second line is your respiratory system and finally your body is going to contact your kidney to solve the acid base disturbance now finally a fact to remember an important fact to remember is 60% to 70% of the buffering done in our body is due to proteins okay and proteins are more in your intercellular fluid intracellular fluid so that means intracellular fluid only is causing 60 to 70% of the buffering in our body and that is majorly due to your 